In the last video, I got my VIA, this versatile interface adapter, up and running. And I had connected this simple little clip to it so that I could monitor the outputs of the two ports. Basically, there's 16 bits that I can monitor. And I was able to programmatically control that VIA and output things through its two registers. And that seemed to be fine. One of the issues I ran into, though, is if I turned on the system at a slower clock speed, once it got running, I could flip to a high clock speed and it would run fine. But if I tried to start up initially with a high clock speed, something wasn't ready and it would fail to run properly. So I've at least uh, put a workaround in place for that, uh, not a root uh, cause identification yet. But what I've done is what you see on the screen here. Uh, basically what this is is logic that I've added to my PSOC number one, which is generating my clock two clock, P clock, via clock, all those clock signals are coming out of this specific PSOC. And previously I was using a card, this a little card that was generating my clock and let me debug and manually step and all that stuff. But I've taken that out and instead I'm going to have this PSOC generate the full clock internally so I don't need any external hardware for that but what I decided to do is when I turn it on to have it run at a slower clock for just a little bit a few seconds before it flips to the high speed clock and uh, that appears to be working just fine so what you're seeing on my screen is how I implemented that uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm using this uh, component right here that is this uh, multiplexer and it lets me pick which of my inputs I want to actually send out as my clock two. And then that clock two, I divide down into uh, my clock and also into P clock. And the via clock, I'm just doing the same thing as clock for now. So a simple little counter lets me get these different clocks. Uh, this, though, lets me flip between one of two clocks. And one of those clocks uh, basically is taking in a 24 megahertz uh, basically clock signal from my PSOC and brings that through and I am dividing that in half so I'm bringing through a 12 megahertz so I'm either going to run my system at 12 megahertz or I have the option to run it here at 100 hertz and so I can bring in 100 hertz run that for a little bit and then flip the clock over on the fly to a 12 megahertz and basically what I'm doing to do that is down here, a simple little counter. I'm going to count to this. And I, I've just kind of been experimenting with values here, but this is, seems to be about the right delay. So I'm going to count to this hex 1BF. And once it gets there, I'm going to flip from the slow clock to the fast clock. Uh, and that seems to be working. There's a little more logic here that just says don't even start the clocks until I'm out of reset. I'm done with the shadowing. So the shadowing will finish. As soon as the shadowing is finished, this clock counter starts. At the same time, it'll start using a 100 megahertz, uh, basically clock for my system for clock two. And that'll come out clock then would be half of that of 50 hertz. And my via clock would also be 50. But it's gonna run that just for a few seconds and then it's gonna step it up and go to 24, which means 12 here. So 12 megahertz for my clock, uh, clock two and then six megahertz for my clock. So the processor is essentially gonna run at six megahertz. Uh, and I'll, I'll turn this on in a second and show you that. Uh, but that's what I put in for now, at least, just to momentarily keep the clock slower and then pick up the speed and then uh, see if I can then further identify what issues are going on at that point. Now I did test manually bringing in a clock signal and I was running fine uh, with about a 20 megahertz system clock. Uh, in other words, clock two and a 10 megahertz processor clock. That seemed to be fine. Uh, but in this PSOC, its clock internally is a 24 megahertz. So I can either go 24 or I have to drop down to 12. And uh, in this case, uh, 24 is a bit much for this system. Uh, there's just timing wise, it's not going to support 24 as it sits yet. Uh, so I'm going to divide the 24 and a half. And that'll get me down to the 12. So that's where I'm going to run 12 megahertz for the overall clock two, six megahertz for the processor. And this is the logic I'm using for that delayed start. Now, something else I've also done is uh, implement 
the SPI functionality. So I have this nano sitting over here. And if I pull up my schematic, here is that via, and it has all of this connectivity for different SPI functionality. I talked about that briefly last time. But one of the things it's going to connect to is this nano. And so I have a nano sitting here, and that nano is listening for SPI. So I've set up SPI on the nano. And when it receives SPI, I can do one of two things, uh, typically, with uh, this nano. One is I can control this OLED screen over here. So this is, uh, oh, what is it, a 128 by 64 OLED screen, and that is using I2C. So on my Nano, I am going to use these two pins, A5 and A4, for my SCL and SDA, the two main signals for, for that I2C. So from the Nano, I can control this little screen which means my processor can use the VIA to talk to the Nano to get things onto the screen. Uh, in addition to that, the Nano can also use this cable, which is USB serial to my PC, and just simply send across you know, character data, terminal type of data. So I've also connected that up. And maybe I'll minimize all of this and just bring up a terminal application here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the system, and we'll see what we get here. So it turns on right away, and I put an OLED init message there. That's just coming from the Nano. But that post-complete message was prompted by the processor. So when the processor got to the right point in code, it sent an SPI signal through the VIA, using the VIA to generate SPI to the Nano, that says, I'm done with my postcode. And then the Nano has code that put on the message post complete. So that is coming through. The SPI is working there. You'll also see I have TerraTerm up here. And when I turn that on, the Nano goes through and it does an initialization. When it's done initializing, I, I send a message out to the USB serial that says initialization complete. And then there's an OLED setup and a an, uh, begin and a complete. That's all done in the Nano. But then that dollar sign, well, two things, the SPI and via init is a signal I sent from the processor to the nano to send a message over to the PC that says I'm doing this SPI initialization. I'm initializing the via with it. I then write out a dollar sign and a new line. And then I write out a string that says 8386 at 6 megahertz. So system bus at 12 megahertz. And so far, I'm only using 640 by four, or 640K of memory. And so that's all looking good. So if I maybe give a real quick recap on the code side of things, you know, I have my 8386 code here that I'm working on. And there's probably a lot of junk in here that maybe isn't necessary or optimized or anything like that, but I'm not too, too worried about that. And maybe I will update this. Today's the 12th. And so what I've come in here and done is I've added in uh, maybe I modified my, my setup of my segments a little bit, uh, registers, so some quick setup there. I disable interrupts, and then I call a procedure called SPI init. And that SPI init is in a separate file, but then that basically goes through and sets up my VIA the way I want. So it disables interrupts on the VIA. It sets up uh, which ports are input, well, which pins on the ports are input and output, and then it actually sets some initial values. And all the values I'm going to write to those ports are SPI related. So they're either uh, you know, chip slash cable selects, chip selects, basically MOSI, MISO. Uh, and I'm going to basically bit bang you know, all of that communication for SPI. So this is the initialization code I have for that. And then after I do that, then I put a, a dollar character into AL, into that low byte of that register. And I call a procedure I have called print char SPI. So over here, there's going to be a separate procedure I've written for printing characters with SPI and basically sending that command to here, and then that's going to pass it on to my PC. So in this case, I'm going to load up a command that it's command one that I want to load up a basically print a character all the way through an AH. So AH is my command. AL is going to be what character I want to print that was previously put into AL. And then I have a procedure called uh, send a command to the nano through serial. So that is going to send an SPI command to this that says 
I want to uh, run a command, I want to print a character, and I want to print that dollar sign character. And if I want, you know, I could go take a look at what that procedure looks like, and I'm not going to get into all the, the nuts and bolts of SPI right now, but uh, this is basically my code that goes through and does that. Now, all these knobs were from my previous 286 code, so I probably can take these knobs out, especially at the speed I'm running at here. Um, but this is all my functionality to um, get in and start sending the SPI. I have uh, other procedures I call that actually write out bytes or read bytes from the ports, etc. That's all my SPI functionality. Uh, if I go back over to my main code, so after I print out the dollar sign, I have a procedure that simply sends a new line character to the PC. Then I point to a message, which I have over in some ROM data. And so I have a message here, and th that's the message that I want to print. And then I come back to here, and after I point to that message, I have a procedure called print string to serial, and it basically goes and gets that message and prints it out to my USB serial. And then after that, I'm going to send another command to the nano, and this is a command, and I have a whole series of commands set up, just going to pre preset with all of the information in the nano that if I say, for example, my post is complete, and here I'm going to say, I want to send a status to the OLED, and that status is that my post is complete. So this is basically information that I move into AX, and when I send that or call this with that in AX, my nano says, okay, you want me to print something to the OLED, and the specific message is that the post is complete. And within the nano, I have the actual string ready of this post complete. It's kind of a pre-built string that I can trigger at any point. And then at the end of that, I halt the whole system. Uh, nothing that I continue on at that point. You know, if I briefly look at the uh, nano code over here, uh, the way it's going to work. So this is this uh, code running on the nano. I have it set up with an interrupt. So if it receives any SPI communication, then it does something. And what I do is I basically look for where in a sequence of packets might this be, if it's a first packet versus uh, maybe something I'm sending a, ch a bunch of chunks of data or something. But what I do is I simply figure out, well, what command is being received, and I queue it up in a little queue object that I have. Um, but you can see I have a bunch of different commands already, you know, preset that I've been using on my 286. So a bunch of those and I then have a loop and on the loop it's just checking to see if there's things in the queue and if there is stuff in the queue then I go ahead and I process that item in the queue and that's where I'm going to look at well which command did you send across and then based on the command do something and so for example there would be one in here about my post complete so if I do a post complete it's going to print this to the OLED uh, so that's the basics of this this nano you know and some of these instead of point, printing it to the oled of course i'm going to send it uh, out through my serial communication so i might send a message like here if i clear the oled it's going to send a serial message uh, over the pc that says i'm clearing the oled plus it'll then clear the oled screen and this is still reflecting my 286 code, so I'll, I'll make a copy of this for my 386 and start optimizing it for that. But the result, if I go back, is this. So here's where, at some point, I said I was initializing, and so the nano had that string ready. If I sent a command that said initialize uh, this OLED to the nano, the nano does the initialization, which basically just you know gets the, the display ready to use and then also sent a, a string over to the PC. And then I sent out my dollar sign, and then I said, uh, print out this string, and that's what it did. And I had also sent a command to then do a post complete here. Uh, so that all seems to be good. And uh, like I mentioned, I can go with a faster speed if I give an external input on this. And I think in the next PCB I do of this, I will put a header a socket for an oscillator so I can just run any speed oscillator into this PSOC and not be confined to 24 megahertz or 12 or 6 or 3 uh, or you know basically uh, fractions of uh, even uh, division of that 24 megahertz 
because uh, I might want to run a 20 megahertz system clock, uh, a CLK2 with a 10 megahertz processor. And I don't think I can do that with the Nano. I either have to go 24 for clock two or 12, and I probably am going to want something in between those two. So I'll end up putting in just a small socket for an oscillator that will feed a pin. That is my incoming uh, clock that all the other clocks will be generated off of. So I think pretty sitting pretty good there. I think the next thing I probably am going to want to try to do is get an ISA slot filled in and get my graphics card uh, up and running inside of this. And so I can go pull my, my video card from my 286 build and plug that in and that should get me to a 640 by 480 and I map that to an A0000 physical address space for a 64K segment. Uh, but I've got code that controls that. So that'll be the first test of how good or bad these Euro DIN connectors are going to bring these signals down here. You know, I do have these down here and it definitely does make a difference what values I'm using for these uh, resistors that are right now I'm doing pull downs on the bus. I can configure that to pull up or pull down, but I'm doing pull downs on pretty much all the address and data signals. And these values are making a difference in you know, the signal quality I'm seeing. Uh, but I want to kind of get an actual card in here that's going to be generating or using a lot more traffic coming across this. And then I can start looking at what, what do those uh, signals look like? Uh, some of you had expressed interest in, you know, what's it going to look like after I go through all of this, through these connectors, all the way down here? Uh, are my signals going to be uh, pretty messy or, or not so bad? And, and I don't know yet, so we'll find out. But if I can get a VGA card working, uh, that would be then a, a really good a win, I guess, in my build or a success as far as me going through this. But then I can look at those signals and see how good or bad they are. And also then try to see what kind of speeds I'm realistically going to be able to start achieving. My experience on my 286 is I can run the core stuff very fast. But as soon as I really put in you know, a socket um, for or an ISA slot and put some cards in, then typically I have to come down to a 10 megahertz processor or 9 megahertz or, or if I'm really playing it safe, 8 megahertz uh, CLK or 16 megahertz CLK2. So I'm definitely curious to see what I'm going to find out when I get to that point. But uh, ending it here, you know, recap, I put a delayed uh, step up to high speed on the clock. So it starts a little slow for a few seconds, then jumps to the high speed. I still need to come back and find the root cause of that. It's, I'm sure, just some timing thing that I need to identify. And then beyond that, I switched from my simple bar graph output to an actual set of SPI functionality through these two ports. That is working to the Nano. The Nano is connecting to a screen and to my PC. Uh, so that's it for now. Uh, more to come.